wondering. This is something that sometimes you might understand because I don't at all. That's me and this is Russ. Oh no, that's and this is us together. It's the goal of the reason that you. And what would you like me to do with it? I don't know. I have no idea. Talk to you about it sometime? Maybe sometime, if you're interested. Yes, I am. Let me copy the information down and get this back to you. Okay. Or, or, or just hold on to it until I see it. No, I'll get it back to you. Okay. Oh. Okay. Uh, last time, how far did we go? Give me a page. 37D. Yeah. Okay. D, I believe. 37B? Great. Yeah, 37B. We ended it was going into C. Well, I'm sure glad of that because I was up to 50. Okay. Well, we can jump there. 37. See where it takes us. Okay. Yeah, I think 37, we started with that new paragraph then mm -hmm. at D and when the father, how about that? And when the father had engendered it, perceived it, <coughs> that is to say he saw it with his mind emotion alive, a thing of joy to the eternal gods. He flipped out. Sorry, uh, excuse me, he rejoiced. Where, where are you reading? <laughs> Page 75 in the low below. Thank you. All right. At, uh, between C and D, the new paragraph. Perfect. Thank you. Oh, yeah, this is a good, a uh, lot of fun. So we need a sure. reader. Now, whenever you're ready, okay. please begin. <clears throat> and when the father that engendered it perceived it in his mind, the emotion, And when the father that engendered it saw with his mind it in motion and alive, a thing of joy to the eternal gods, he too rejoiced. And being well pleased, he, de he, designed, he designed to make it resemble its model still more closely. Accordingly, seeing then that model is an eternal, seeing that, seeing, Sorry. Ah, let me try this one more time. And when the father that engendered it perceived it in motion and alive, a thing of joy to the eternal gods, he too rejoiced. And being well pleased, he designed to make it resemble its model still more closely. Accordingly, seeing that that model is an eternal living creature, he set about making this universe so far as he could of a like kind. But inasmuch as the nature of the living creature was eternal, this quality it was impossible to attach in its entirety to what is generated. Wherefore, he planned to make a movable image of eternity. And as he set in order of the heaven of that eternity which imbibes in unity, he made an eternal image, moving according to number, even that which we have termed, which we have named time. For simultaneously with the construction of the heaven, he contrived the production of days and nights and months and years, which created, sorry, which existed not before the heaven came into being. And these are all portions of time, 
even as was and shall be are generated forms of time, although we apply them wrongly without noticing to eternal being. For we, for we say that it, it is or was or will be, whereas in truth of speech is alone is the appropriate term. Was and will be, on the other hand, are terms pro properly applicable to the becoming which proceeds in time, since both of these are motions. But it belongs not to that which is ever changeless in its uniformity to become either older or younger through time, nor ever to have become so, nor to be so now, nor to be about to be so hereafter nor to be about to be so hereafter, nor in general to be subject to any of the conditions which becoming has attached to the things which move in the world of sense, these being generated forms of time, which imitates eternity and circles around according to number. And besides these, we make use of the following expressions, that what is become, that what is become is become, and what is becoming is becoming, and what is about to become is about to become, and what is non-existent is non-existent. But none of these expressions is accurate. But the present is not, perhaps, a fitting occasion for an exact discussion of these matters. So would you agree that uh, it's any, a new creation? Yes. Right. A new, therefore, it's a step down following the idea that in any series, the next one is always a resemblance of the higher, and therefore it departs in some significant way from the higher, but generates a new model that has similarities to the former. Right. So, uh, yep. that was very nicely said. What is that idea? Pardon me? That was, that was very, very concise. I apologize. But, but, it's kind of like he looked down at the model. We have a model, we have a copy. He looked down at the copy and he said, I can do better than that. So he put something in between the model and the copy, which in some way, and, and at the same time, I don't know what the isness, how valuable that term isness is there, but that seems to give substance to what came below. I don't yeah. know. I'm guessing there that the yeah, business well, is right. going to permeate. Yeah. Matter of fact, it's a, uh, strictly speaking, it's another analogy. Yeah. You just said that this model is a departure from another model, which has it that there's like a series one falls from the other is, and is a, as, as I heard it, a as a, as an image stands to its model or a figure stands to its reflection or any one of those images, yeah. Okay, so you were just unpacking what's in the text. Because I, I, I thought I heard you use the word departure yeah. from, from another model. Like, I, yeah. I saw yeah. Hegel in what you were saying, like a historical linear model or something. I, I wasn't quite sure what you were... Let me, yes. let me just ask you a question. Okay.
that what's going on? So first, what would you say to the first one? Would you say there is a new creation? Yes, something new comes in? Is it a dual creation? Does he bring into ex does he produce rather than create? Does he produce time and heaven? Yep. Does it follow the other from the original production? If so, what was the original production? say there is a God. He focuses upon him, so that's the model, the paradigm. On the basis of the paradigm, he then generates. If so, then there must be something, would you not agree? And it has to be towards something which is towards a good, and therefore there must be some divine force, right? some saying, now that I've made, made creation, oh shit, i got to stand around and watch it. Well, now that I've made it, I'm so enjoying it, I can even make it better. That's what he says. More like that. Because there's something missing, and we have to know what's missing. And he's going to tell us what's missing, of course. Time and space. Um, Other than the, there's, okay. Please. No, no, um, because you said because there's something that's missing, and I thought that what, what we just saw was him trying to bring it closer to the paradigm, and in so doing, uh, sorry, bringing, uh, having these two additional creations. And so when you said there's something missing, the, Already he saw a way to polish his original, right? Mm -hmm. Or bring it tighter, mm -hmm. ratchet it down. So that I was just going, going to? So that I was taking you at literally, and I, I think you are to be taken literally. Then we, we're going to see one more thing. Yeah, he is going to, he's going to add to this model. Yes, okay. In order to produce what's coming. Okay. Super. That is to say, he has to add a whole level of metaphysics in order, or principles of theology, in order to complete this to, to produce that, which is in the paragraph we just read. Oh. Thank goodness, because then we don't have to go far. So this is a pretty incomplete model right now. Mm -hmm. Let's work. Come on, let's work. We need it. Is there? Does it follow or not? That's all. Well, good. He, he does say that he fixed his gaze on the eternal. Well, I'm glad of that. Hold it. <laughs> Hold it. Right? Uh -huh. Of the eternal, of the eternal, which abides in unity. I like See, that's a drop. That's not. The paradigm. Is it truly? Yeah, it's eternal with a capital E. So what? <laughs> well, it's bigger than a small E. <laughs> <laughs> the true. trouble with that is it's all capitals at this age. Well, they didn't have lowercase letters for another thousand years. So can you make that little E big? No, no, it's all capitals, truly. Yeah, okay. I'm saying the original Greek is all capital. Okay. So, is that the paradigm? Um, nah. <laughs> we want to see whether there's anything in the paragraph we just read that can complete this. First point was, with your good quote, 
he does fix his mind on something in 28, does he not? Yeah. Is that a, is what he's now doing a step beneath that? Yeah. Thank you. Right. So therefore, it follows mm. copy model. A model copy, I should say. Go ahead. So Good. the copy is that he makes a movable image of eternity. That's what he does, but that doesn't tell us whether there's a paradigm. Oh, okay. True. Jump in. Oh, throughout the whole work, right. like, so, resemble, so that, so always. You must see that there is some, in some way, his creation is not as much like the paradigm as it could be. Right? And otherwise, he was delighted at his work, but he still sought, sought some way of making it more similar I totally agree with to you. its exemplar. So, so what's the the model? Mm -hmm. well, paradigm. Paradigm. Want to read the Thomas Taylor for you in that part? No, no, either one, any one. As long as you have the question in mind, we want to see whether we can identify one, two, three, four on the lower level. Julie offered one, this passage looking at gazing upon himself. Ah, now he's gazing at the eternal. So we have number two. Is he still at work? One is fulfilled then. But how about three and four? Is that there? I'm not sure. How to, I, I'm not sure Look, I see, the, the question I'm raising is, yeah. Is he still using the original paradigm to do the rest of it, or is there another role for something that is like the paradigm? Yeah. Uh -huh. And like you would the, say clearly? I would say clearly like the paradigm, because it's changeless, right? Yeah. But it's eternal abiding in unity, and it looks as if it's the paradigm that abiding in unity might be the paradigm for number, or might be the, that, the way in which one arrives at number, so like a oneness. But that's not in the text right now. That's an interpretation. But yeah, that seems to be a difference. Yeah, what unity is he abiding in? See, mm -hmm. um, no, I have an easier way of asking that. How did he do this? How did he bring time in? How did he bring in? Just tell me the steps in that paragraph. Did he have to do something? He endeavored to render this universe such as to the utmost of his ability. Well, pardon me? I didn't hear that. Hence, as that is an internal animal, he endeavored to render this universe such to the utmost of his ability. And that says what for us? How can we use it? Well, he's, he's going to use his own excellence to do something to make something better, to endeavor to render it. Okay, okay. Let me uh, put another thing in here then. In order to go further... <laughs> has to be movable. Does he add to his original model. Uh, the moving image of eternity. Uh, uh, pardon me, to the original, I don't want to use the word model. Uh, yeah, to his procedures. A higher element. See, this goes back to the question of whether or not this is a cosmology or whether this is a work on the providence of God. Because if there was something that was that hierarchically and descending as a chronology should, if, it, if one is really dealing with a cosmology, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, 
then there shouldn't be any need to go back and, inst and add something to it when he should have had it there in the first place, if it proceeds as a cosmology. Therefore, this is not a cosmology. If, in fact, he's adding something that should belong in here, that is not. That's all. So, uh, well, why I'll tell you what, just to make it easier on me, um, why don't we just read that paragraph once more? Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. And when the Father that engendered it perceived it in motion and alive, a thing of joy to the eternal gods, he too rejoiced. And being well pleased, he designed to make it resemble its model still more closely. Resemble it. See? Go um, ahead. Yes. Accordingly, seeing that that model is an eternal living creature, he set about making this universe, so far as he could, of a like kind. Hmm. Go ahead. But inasmuch as the nature of the living creature was eternal. Ah, see, this is eternal. Big, big issue. Go ahead. This quality it was impossible to attach in its entirety to what is generated. Because this is generated. Wherefore, he planned to make a movable image of eternity. A That's movable it. image of eternity. That's it right there. Mm -hmm. Therefore, what must what must we assume exists? Eternity. Eternity. <clears throat> Because to do this, he's going to have a moving image of it. Yeah, interesting. So he's going to create a moving image of eternity. All right, and that's going to be called time. Ah. And as he set in order the heaven... Now he's setting an order. Did he set something in order in 28? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now he's setting in order heaven. 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 Right? Lower. Go ahead. Of that, e of that eternity which abides in unity, he made an eternal image, moving according to number. Hey, Even... The, uh, See, if we need to, uh, see, major, major. Yes. It should be in one. In one, yes. Not the one, because that's non-participable. All right, go ahead. Okay. So, of that eternity which abides in one, he made an eternal image, moving according to number. Ah. Even that which we have named time. Yeah, okay. So that's rather that's rather important. Mm -hmm. so, uh, well, that's rather clever. Um, Let me try something, okay. Um, we could easily um,
it's got a poor terminology, hasn't it? Eternity is to time as animal itself or the paradigm is to the cosmos. Intelligible paradigm. And uh, obviously one of the advantages of seeing it in it is that you can then structure it in, in terms of uh, alternando uh, and say eternity is to the paradigm as time is to the cosmos. So what? Well, if this if this four terminology is sound, so too would be the ultranondo, wouldn't it? Yes. Right? And if the ultranondo is therefore it must follow them that um, eternity stands is the higher to the lesser as the higher is to the lesser. And therefore it must follow that eternity must be higher than the parent than the paradigm. Hmm. If so then we're right in saying that eternity does not abide in the paradigm, but must come before it. Mm -hmm. Right? <clears throat> now, uh, why is the... Who is that again? Pardon me? Who is that again? Who came before eternity? Well, I think I'm, I'm trying to pull out from the book this four terminology. Yeah, I'm, but but eternity is the time, is the paradigm, is the cosmos. Got it. If that's the case, should be equally valid, shouldn't it? That is to say, eternity stands to the paradigm as time stands to the cosmos. You would think so. so. And if that's the case, then uh, this is the higher, uh -huh. this is the lesser, this is the higher, this is the lesser. Mm -hmm. So correspondingly, this must be the higher of the higher, and this is the higher of the lesser. If so, then, uh, the reason he sang it abides in the one is to show you that it does not abide in the paradigm. Whoa. Therefore, that, the paradigm must be prior to the image of the mind of God. Mm -hmm. And Barbara had a very enlightening discussion. I wonder, can I share that? Well, certainly. Barbara was giving a talk in the kitchen about the significance of T-Y, the suffix and what it does to a word, to a noun, right? Uh, what was it that I was enlightening you about? I thought you were enlightening me about something. No, no, wait a minute. Am I joking? Were you not talking about the suffix E T T Y? Uh, following your question, I was, certainly. <laughs> well, I forgot who started it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the abstract noun forming suffix tos, tapitas in Latin that turns into T Y through the French? Yes. And now, what does the T-Y do then? It's an abstract noun for me. Suffix. It's an abstract noun. Uh, look, um, is, look, what happens to this? Um, <laughs> well, I didn't say it exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Is there such a word as being safe? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What does safety mean? To be Can you see some more T-Ys like that? Yeah. What does it do? makes a noun and uh, uh, gives substance to the uh, quality or points to the substance of the quality. Wow. The essence or the, uh, or the 
reality or the substance or the, the reality. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. So if there are a lot of things that are safe, mm -hmm. you can say to the person, why I admire your experience. You have many things that you've seen that are safe. Can you now tell us what safety means? Yeah. What do they have to do? They have to rise above the level. They have to of the rise above the particulars and talk about that. Idea. We use the word idea, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes they, they use the word quality, and I don't like that word. I'd rather use the word David used a moment ago. Right, it rises. Right. So therefore, if there are many things that are eternal, it owes its existence to eternity. eternity. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Can I just ask one really short question here? Sure. Yeah. Is eternity before or after God? After. Okay. Now, wait a minute. You've got to remember there are four ideas of God, but no one, because in this case we're talking about the demiurgus as a efficient cause, not material, efficient cause. Okay. Well, I'll just settle for a bison one. Let's put it this way. In terms of Plato. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, in terms of metaphysics, right? One. Yeah. Eternity. Yeah. Uh, because eternity is that which, in terms of the Greek, is that which always is. That's what he said. Changeless. Mm. Each one of those was an is. <laughs> right. Each number right. is an right. is. That's what the eternity means. Yeah. Right? What that which always is. And therefore, it is not, it doesn't belong in the class of being, it precedes being. Because being doesn't always have to be something that always is. Okay. So it's a, a higher class of being, and therefore it stands apart from it. And therefore we have a term which is really a monad, or you know, depending upon how you want to think about it. So, with which part of the text? Do you see that eternity is the time is the higher ratio? Well, um, would you agree there has to be a higher term for uh, anything that is eternal? Mm -hmm. Eternal is a characteristic, so it must assume yeah. an abstract. No, no, no. And if there's an image of eternity, and that's what time is, therefore the idea of, it, of, of time must be a subsidiary class of the phenomena that you can call uh, in general time, or chronos. Right? Um, I want to make sure I have your question. Um, If eternity is that which always is, you're talking about the, an exemplary way of talking about time. Okay. Therefore, the idea of eternity must be a higher, have a higher status than time. Oh yes, that's not the... And, and must always be. Yeah, go ahead. Right, that's not what I was directing my question to, but uh, rather... The, the relationship between the first ratio and the second, between eternity is to time, where eternity is to time as per, um, the paradigm is to the cosmos. Where, where can I see that eternity is to time should be the first ratio before okay. paradigm is to cosmos? Right. Well, there's no doubt about the first ratio, agree? Yeah. Right. There's no doubt about the second. I You're asking that. why put them in the same analogy? Why put those two ratios Not, in the same? No, no, no. Why, why is that the first one first and the second one second? How did you determine the order? Oh, uh, wasn't one above the other? Why is there a priority to the first over the second? Wasn't one place above Textual. the other? Yeah, that's what I want to know. In, okay, in, in I did thought, I thought we'll go back to it. Um, 
the argument was, if you want to say, let us assume we want to hold that the paradigm comes first, or the second set comes first, right? could it, if eternity abides in one and not in the paradigm? The paradigm is eternal. Eternal is a secondary class of things compared to eternity. I see. Therefore, it has a higher status, and therefore, it can be set in those terms. The the animal itself is the intelligible living creature that can the intelligible living creature. That's the animal itself. Is that what we're talking about? Well, it, by animal itself, are you referring to what he had The paradigm, which is really, he should have put, if he wanted to be more accurate, intelligible living, living creature, creature okay. or being, but he dropped to just animal itself. Okay. So now he's going to now play on this word in terms of time, see, that which always is, he's now going to pick up is, and now he's going to talk about how is can be understood in respect to time rather than eternity. See, the Greek word eternity is literally that which always is. So that's nice. We had to build it. They have it within the word itself. So. The idea of is, he's now going to pick on, and now we're going to have an analysis of is in respect to time. I, I, I thought eternity was beyond the everlasting. Always is is the everlasting. Right? Always is. Oh. But I thought there was a term beyond always is called eternity. I thought there was a, I, I, I'm surprised to hear okay. eternity okay. always is. Uh, what you're suggesting, I believe, is that you want, you might argue that there is something prior to eternity between that and the good. The way we're the using the, the term here, yeah, I would yeah. think there's something yeah. prior to it. And I thought that was you're, quite called right. eternity. you're quite right. You're quite right. He did it. It's called what? Okay. Yeah. Not the one. Therefore, he has some idea of a monad or a henad that is independent, that is, today separates saying that he's putting in here eternity and one. Because eternity abides in one. Therefore, right, we're building this metaphysics. And, and he also needs another term, which we're going to get nature in a short while to stick that in as well. Uh, I don't know. I have two more questions. Um, I want to bring in the earlier part that we read at 28A. That uh, term, that phrase that we were investigating earlier, ever uniformly existent. The I cut the cloud on. Are you in 28 or? 28A. Oh, good. Page 49. Good.
So where do we place that ever uniformly existent? Because that always that also has the word always in it. Mm -hmm. According to the same. Where do we place that? Um, it's the See, the, the, um, the question you're raising is um, we <coughs> he's developing a whole set of terms that he's going to call in this and in, in 28. In here, of course, all he talks about is, is the existence always. And the word existence is poor choice of terms. Um, the ever uniformly existent. And this is that whole study that we've been involved in with good old Tao Tao, mm -hmm. et cetera. Mm -hmm. So I'd, I'd rather hold on that because it's a surprise coming for that. Oh boy. <laughs> just, just for a while, okay? What about, okay, and my second question, if I may? Um, See, the point you're raising is where we can put that into our metaphysics, just to make sure. Right. Right, because it looks like you can put it in several places. Yeah, either the same or in between. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, same. Right. Paradigm, same, eternity. In one way, you can say that bare expression can fit in at least uh, four places. Mm. Right? One, two, three, four. And there's a, another expression then at 29A, page 53. Could you do that for me? 29A, page 53. Hold it. Mm -hmm. Page 53 at the top. But it is clear to everyone that his gaze was on the eternal. That's a different word than the Greek, to ideal. Mm -hmm. Do you have any thoughts on that? Hmm. He keeps his gaze fixed on that which is uniform, using a model of this kind. What? Right. Sure. And the question is, as we proceed with that, will that be then which one of these, and it's going to end up being the paradigm, or the intelligible living creature? On the top of page 53. So the top of page 53. Is it either? No. But it's clear to everyone that his gaze was on the eternal. No. Mm -hmm. And that eternal is a different word. No. And that's what we're saying here. Yeah, go ahead. Well, it's not any of those words that we saw as eternal before. Uh, uh, what we were looking at at 37. This is a different Greek word for eternal, called ideal. At this point, you wanted to make a point on page 53. Okay, could you just go back to that point? Yeah, the top of page 53, mm -hmm. the word eternal, Yes. is a different Greek word than the words we've used for eternal over here. Mm -hmm. So strictly speaking, it should have its own place in the metaphysics, no? Well, I'm going to try my best to try to figure out what question you have in your mind because it keeps slipping away from me. So. Well, it's the same question as the prior one where you were trying to put terms into the metaphysics. And well, this is a new one. Uh, isn't he calling the paradigm the eternal? Yeah, in English it's the same word, eternal. In the Greek I'm saying it's different. Okay, what do you want? How, okay. Well, I, I wanted to know whether you had reflected on the fact that it's different and where, if you had a place for it that's distinct from <coughs> um, the other, a distinct position for it. 
Uh, Nabui, you seem to have found something in the Greek which hasn't yet been captured in the text so far. And you see it as different spelling, different, and, and, and therefore, I'm wondering what you would translate this new word that needs to be, because you haven't done that. What, what is this new word that needs to be slipped in to your, your hierarchy? How would you translate that? I don't know. Well, you better translate it before we slip it in there, because nobody knows how to write Greek anymore. Yeah, you're a Greek guy, too, so come on. It's difficult to sneak something in there if we don't know what we're writing. Right. We need well, a word. I would just write it in the Greek. <laughs> well, Taylor well, offered then you'd have the to write paradigm. All, you'd have to write all the other stupid forms to so show how it was different. <laughs> he has the Julie. <laughs> he has it. Oh, he has What do you say? You'd have to write all the other stupid forms. Okay. All right, then we push on while he's looking that up. We're on time at this point. Well, I, also, aren't we talking here, when, when we're talking about the eternal here, aren't we talking about the quality of that which he's gazing at? We're not talking about a substantive. In, at this point, I don't think. No, he's distinguishing right. between two kinds of models. That's right. right. It's not. It's not. The model is not the eternal. The model, the eternal, is the quality of that which he's gazing at. That's right. right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Good. Yeah. No. That's right. Okay. Uh, Barbara, you were doing well. Do you want to do it now? Or you can pass it. Uh, you can pass way. it. Okay. I'll read. Now, the idea of number is so. so interesting because um, number, the idea of number must include the idea of measure. Mm -hmm. That everything that exists has a measure, a period of time in which it exists whether it fulfills its fullest extent is another issue, but everything has, like mankind has a certain length of time in which he can live, elephants another, cats another, etc., etc. Different number measures their existence. So let's keep, pick it up from there. We need a reader. I'll read it. Well, that's fair enough. <laughs> uh, let's see. Where am I reading? <laughs> Time then came into existence along with the heaven to the end that to having been. It goes along with it. It's a simultaneous dual creation. Go ahead. To the end that having been generated together, they may, might also be dissolved together if ever a dissolution of them should take place. And it was made after the pattern of the eternal nature, to the end that it might be as like thereto as possible. For whereas the pattern is existent through all eternity, the copy, on the other hand, is through all time, continually having existed, existing, and being about to exist. Wherefore, as a consequence of this reasoning and design on the part of God, with a view to the generation of time, the sun and moon and five other stars, which bear the appellation of planets, came into existence. I like that. Four. Could, could you pick it up at uh, um, uh, 37E for us? Yes. For simultaneously with the construction of the heavens? Sure. For simultaneously with the construction of the heaven, he contrived the production of days and nights and months and years, which existed not before the heaven came into being. And these are all portions of time, even as was and shall be are generated forms of time, although we apply them wrongly without noticing to eternal being. For we say that it is or was 
or will be, whereas in truth of speech, is alone is the appropriate term. Was and will be, on the other hand, are terms properly applicable to the becoming which proceeds in time, since both of these are motions. But it belongs not to that which is ever changeless in its uniformity to become either older or younger through time, nor ever to have become so, nor to be so now, nor to be about to be so hereafter, nor in general to be subject to any of the conditions which becoming has attached to the things which move in the world of sense. These being generated forms of time, which imit imitates eternity, and circles round according to number. And besides these, we make use of the following expressions, that what is become, is become, and what is becoming, is becoming, and what is about to become, is about to become, and what is non-existent, is non-existent. But none of these expressions is accurate, but the present is not, perhaps, a fitting occasion for an exact discussion of these matters. So he's saving is. And the whole discussion he's saving is. I'm putting in the two ideas of time and what is generated in the cosmos, right? Is that clever? All right, okay, now we shift. Next paragraph, if we can do an unbelievable two paragraphs in one night. <laughs> Well, you see, the criticism against you guys is always the same. You're just slow readers. It's not your fault? Do you realize you've introduced this next paragraph four times already tonight? Oh, Jeez. I'm sure. <laughs> okay. Are you good for another paragraph sure. or pass the buck? I'll do another paragraph. Okay. Time then came into existence along with the heaven mm. to the end that having been generated together, they might also be dissolved together, if ever a dissolution of them should take place. And it was made after the pattern of the eternal nature, to the end that it might be as like thereto as possible. For whereas the pattern is existent through all eternity, the copy, on the other hand, is through all time, continually having existed, existing, and being about to exist, Wherefore, as a consequence of this reasoning and design on the part of God, with a view to the generation of time, the sun and moon and five other stars, which bear the appellation of planets... Okay, that's enough. What did he just do? He, liked, he linked time to the cycle of the planets and, and made it something you could measure by watching planets interact. Um, mm. Would you agree he's going back though in the first part and he's recapitulating it, bringing it together what he just developed and sneaks in another term. Sneaks in. Look what he's doing. So. Time then came into existence along with the heaven mm. to the end that being generated together they might also be dissolved together if ever a dissolution of them should take place and it was made after the pattern of the eternal nature sneaky to the end that it might be as like thereto as possible for as hey for whereas the pattern is existent through all eternity. The copy, on the other hand, is through all time. Hey, what do we got? We have two models. Agree? Two models. We got two models. One eternal, one dies. And therefore, it is like as possible can be. It's like it. It's like what he did before. Ah, what's he now calling, instead of the paradigm, 
Well, the intelligible living creature or the intelligible creature. What's he calling it now? Have time in heaven. Eternal nature. Eternal nature. Eternal nature. Ah. He's sneaking in the word nature. Wow. He's gonna, he needs that because it isn't complete. But look, see, does he stress it to the end that it might be as like thereto as possible? For as, whereas the pattern is existent through all eternity, that, of course, is the paradigm. The copy, on the other hand, is through all time. So we got a copy of the paradigm that's going to go through all time and it's going to be called? Eternal nature. Yeah, nature. See? Nature. Eternal nature. Because, see, he needs, in the, see this idea now, cosmos, he's going to stick in here. He's sneaking it in, see? Sneaking it in. <laughs> Obama should do that. <laughs> Creating more jobs. Better. More jobs, yeah. Yeah, yeah when, <laughs> when Obama <laughs> hears this. Sneak right? in nature and then say, we so got to take care of it. He'll just open up the checkbook and, and give us a couple of billion. <laughs> yeah, he's a jerk. I mean, he's pretty good. <laughs> what does that mean that he's introducing... He's saying that the pattern is necess necessarily dual, right? Because he's saying it's just like, it's just like it. It's got time and heaven, both. Yeah. It's got two. Yeah. It's that just like it. It's just like the eternal. Like, copy, image. But then... Likeness. But what he calls it eternal nature... See, th that's it. It can't be as high as the... But nature, nature can be eternal. See, we don't know what this word means yet. But we do know that it takes on the quality of something eternal. And he's linking it with a copy, is he not? How did you know where to place it so low? How did you know to place it in the cosmos and not, and not place that same idea way up in eternity, for example? He's saying... You're raising a good point. We're, we're, you're asking how legitimate is it to stick this term in there? Where is and I'm saying it's pretty it? sloppy, and I'll take it out. No garbage. Ah. But, but on the other <laughs> hand, he does seem to stress it in that sentence. There is a copy of it, on the other hand, it and it's through all time. Well, where are we going to put the copy? The copy is going to be something that controls... Something that can be responsible for growth and generation, etc. Therefore, that's the way they do it in uh, Scandinavia. You know, did you look? There's the the term there for for eternity is really interesting because it picks up the idea of through. If yes. you look two lines above C, yes. there it's D A O N I S, right? Oh yes. Right. You're right. D Oh, they are all there. You know, they he's put they put the dia in front of them. Uh -huh. So it's a compound with dia. I, isn't that an interesting place to put that compound? Because the whole idea is true, it's, it's, right? It's, it's, yeah, it's moving time. Yeah. Well, it's except that it's the, the the pattern of the eternal nature. That's where they're using that term. Okay. Right. Keep going. There's repeat it so, then. I was wondering if it had come up earlier. Uh, just re repeat what you said with Amma David. Go ahead. Oh, well, um, I, I was saying that uh, where, where we've had the word eternal before, here we have a word that, that suggests across or across through. Across or through. Right? And um, David, mm -hmm. and so I was saying, and, and I was saying that, that, that here where through the time is the copy, we have mm -hmm. uh, that term through being applied to the etern eternality. So it's like it's it, there is a there is a very distinct model copy or mirroring mm. one to the other. Good show. And it's modifying nature. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So. And nature is nature made up of time and heaven. Is that? 
No, this is the eternal, na the eternal nature. Time and nature are the copy. I mean, time and uh, heaven are the copy. Time and heaven are the copies of eternal nature? Yeah, because it says, and, right? It says, time then came into existence along with the heaven to the end that having been generated together, they might also be dissolved together if ever a dissolution of them should take place. And it was made after the pattern. Mm -hmm. right? Nature is to time in heaven as time is to heaven is to eternity. That's good. Ed? Okay. I want to just go for one sentence, so if we could just go. I don't want to hold you up with other questions, but I just want to sneak one idea in so we can get our reader to continue. Actually, a couple of ideas are interesting, but go ahead. Okay, um, whereas as a consequence of this reasoning and design on the part of God with a view... Shh, 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 shh. With a view... Where are you? To the general... I'm at 38C2. Good, slow down. Wherefore, as a consequence of this reasoning and design on the part of God with a view to the generation of time, the sun and moon and five other stars, which bear the appellation of planets, came into existence for the determining and preserving of the numbers of time. What is it for? The determining and preserving of the numbers of time. That's right. All that idea, right? And when God had because made... Because mm -hmm. it's required for making time. Go ahead. And when God had made the bodies of each of them, he placed them in the orbits along which the revolution of the other was moving. Seven orbits for the seven bodies. The moon he placed in the first circle around the earth. The sun in the second above the earth. And the morning star and the star called sacred to Hermes he placed in those circles which move in an orbit equal to the sun in velocity. But All of the brightest objects in the heavens. One, two, three, four, right? Mm -hmm. Mercury, yeah, Venus, the moon, the sun. Go ahead. He placed in those circles which move in an orbit equal to the sun in velocity, but endowed with a contrary with a power contrary thereto. Whence it is that the sun and the star of Hermes and the morning star regularly overtake and are overtaken by one another. As to the rest of the stars, were one to describe in detail the positions in which he set them, and all the reasons therefore, the description, though but subsidiary, would prove a heavier task than the main argument which it subserves. Later on, perhaps, at our leisure, these points may receive the attention of merit. Here comes the sentence. Go ahead. So, when each of the bodies whose cooperation was required for the making of time... Do it again. So, when each of the bodies whose cooperation was required for the making of time... Don't. ...had arrived in its proper orbit, and when they had been generated as living creatures, having their bodies bound with living bonds, and had learnt their appointed duties, then they kept revolving around the circuit of the other, which is transverse and passes through the circuit of the same and is dominated thereby. And part of them moved in a greater, part in a smaller circle, those in the smaller moving more quickly and those in the greater more slowly. And because of the motion of the same, the stars which revolve most quickly appeared to be overtaken by those which moved most slowly, although in truth they overtook them. For because of their simultaneous progress in two opposite directions, the motion of the same, which is the swiftest of all motions, twisted all their circles into spirals, and thus caused the body, which moves away from it most slowly, to appear the nearest. And in order that there might be a clear measure of the relative speed, slow and quick, with which they traveled round their eight orbits, in that circle which is second from the earth, God kindled a light, which now we call the sun, to the end that it might shine so far as possible throughout the whole heaven, and that all the living creatures entitled thereto might participate in number, 
learning it from the revolution of the same and similar. In this wise, and for these reasons, were generated night and day, which are the revolution of the one and most intelligent circuit, and month, every time that the moon, having completed her own orbit, overtakes the sun, and year, as often as the sun has completed his own orbit. Of the other stars, the revolutions have not been discovered by men, save for a few out of the many, maybe in Egypt, wherefore they have no names for them. Look, you can cut this section out in my copy. It doesn't exist because it's not important. <laughs> no. But um, I wonder whether we could just take a look at 90D for the moment. Jeez, all the way over there. Just for a moment, just 90D. <laughs> You can actually start at B if you like, but uh, it's a rather long paragraph. But, uh, but I just wanted the whole paragraph is very interesting, but the part that might be important to us right now picks up at D on page 247 in the load. And for the divine part within us, the congenial motions are the intellections and revolutions of the universe. These, each one of us, should follow, rectifying the revolutions within our head, which were distorted at our birth, by learning the harmonies and revolutions of the universe, and thereby making the part that thinks like unto the object of its thought, and in accordance with its original nature, and having achieved this likeness, attained finally to that goal of life which is set before men by the gods at the most good both for the present and for the time to come. Do you find that uh, an interesting paragraph? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, the, the, he's, going to, he's going to unpack the section that we have now about the revolutions of the heavens in order to make us see the implications of that so we can pull it together in 90 D. Wow. That's where he's going. So, so just keep, keep the language, right? Hey, light, 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 same, right, same. What does he mean by same? Keep all the language together as we proceed because this is where he's going. Beautiful. And of course, he can't do that without the role of dreams, which you already know. Oh. <laughs> Don't you? I'd like to, I forgot the quote, where was it? You forgot it? Yeah. Barbara, is that rule still going? I believe so. And any time Igmar forgets something, he owes us a six-pack? That's right. You caught me on a bad time on life. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe just for a moment you might want to take a look at a curious section. Um, uh, I'll talk to you. Um, I owe you a couple six-packs. Seventy-two. The organs of divination. This whole work is on divination and pro prophecy, of course, prophetic. But this is where he focuses on the organ of divination and dreams. Divination and prophecy. This whole work.
See, the whole thing that he's been doing up to this point is in that opening sentence. For they who constructed us, remembering the injunction of their father, and when he enjoined upon them to make the mortal kind as good as they possibly could, see, that's what the whole book is to try to bring that about, rectified the vile part of us by thus establishing therein the organ of divination, that it might in, in some degree lay hold of truth, and that God gave unto man's foolishness the gift of divination. A sufficient token is this, no man achieves true and inspired divination when it is in his rational mind, but only when the power of his intelligence is fettered in sleep or when it's distraught by disease or by reason of some divine inspiration. But it belongs to a man when his right mind to recollect and ponder both the things spoken in a dream or waking vision. By the divining and inspired nature and all the visionary forms that were seen and by means of reasoning discerned about them all wherein they're significant and for whom they portend uh, evil or good in the future past or the present. Wow. So that's, where, that's why he's going through all, all of the purification of the body and, and uh, the soul to open up the divination. Hi, right, Cole. Is that right? Is that what, what you were doing with the Buya earlier? And Pardon me? What you were doing earlier. What the we were doing earlier? Dream analysis. No. I'll be darned. Time to quit. Thank you. Okay. Fantastic. Mm. Mm. Pardon me. Are you planning to do the dream? We could, could. yeah, we could. It's just my question. Yeah. Either put the camera away, leave the camera off. Yeah. Shall we leave it cooked for a couple minutes? Well, wait a minute. What we need is a. Uh, uh, who would like to do the dream? Analysis of the dream. Okay. Read it first yourself and then give them the mark copy. Mark copy. Yours. I'm going to try. Okay, let's take a break.